just won the uh, Nam Tech Award in which category? Uh, software in uh, DSP signal processing plugins. And what was the what is the product? Product is Hitsville Reverb Chambers, and it is a product that emulates the chambers at Hitsville USA. So Hitsville USA was the Motown studio from late 50s until 1972. People talk about Phil Spector's uh, echo in Gold Star Studios and uh, the studios on the Sunset Strip of, from the 60s and the incredible reverb. How did Motown's reverb compare? Well, Motown definitely had their own chamber sound and they had two chambers there in the house studio. There was two houses basically joined together, 2648 and 2644. 2648 was the original chamber built by Pop Gordy, Barry Gordy's dad. So an engineer named John Went, he was 19 at the time, was asked to go clear out the attic so that Pop Gordy could build a reverb chamber in the attic. So it's actually two attics that support the sound of these reverb chambers. What would comprise a reverb chamber at that time? Well, it's really just hard surfaces in a space that you have available. In the case of Hitsville, they had these attics, so it's a limited space. 2648 chamber, it kind of looks like an old school army tent. It's not that large, it's maybe 20 feet by eight feet. Was it echoey? It's pretty echoey and it's actually not very perfect in terms of chamber design, but it has a sound and that sound is a very definable, recognizable sonic fingerprint on those Motown records. And there's a lot of things that people say make up the Motown sound, but I'd have to say most people recognize the chamber as probably the most important component to that, especially for those early records. What would be those, uh, the Barrett Strong records? Excuse me? Wh which were the early records in which the reverb made a difference? I mean, Marvin Gaye records. Would, you yeah. want to jump in? Yeah, no, everything. And then, uh, from uh, Supremes, Marvin Gaye, Tammy. Uh, those are the notable sounds. Hand claps, uh, voices, yeah, the Supremes, strings. Where did our love go? The hand claps. Yeah. That, it's isolated, and you can really hear what that particular chamber sounds like if you listen to the intro of yeah. that record. Yeah. How did you uh, replicate or acoustically engineer uh, uh, through uh, physics and science the sounds of that particular place? Yeah. Well, the basic technology is impulse response recordings, but there's more to it than that. We have the ability to move the mics around in the room. And in addition to that, we kind of take upon the whole history of those chambers because the equipment changed over the time. So, there's different speaker setups, different microphone setups that are available to you in the plugin. So having worked with the alumni from Hitsville, we were able to actually recreate very specifically the way these chambers were set up. Who were those veterans that helped on the project? Well, Bob Olson was a recording engineer. I got to talk to Mike McLean, who was actually the technical, the chief technical engineer at Hitsville. He actually died shortly after I interviewed him. Uh, and then I got to talk to a guy named John Wint, who really was crucial to being able to recreate that sound. He knew exactly how those chambers were set up. He actually maintained those chambers. So it wouldn't have been possible to do it as accurately as we were able to do without John Wint. So shout out to John Wint for sure. How does your product compare to other products in the category in terms of uh, characteristics? I don't remember everyone in the category, but I think the thing that makes us stand out is that we are very faithful to wanting to re reproduce the sound of the original. We want to be as close as possible to how it sounded. So we brought people in to listen. We a beat a lot of those uh, sounds, and we tried as much as possible to uh, make sure that we felt the same way when listening to those old records. So we even played back old uh, mixes and stems through the, through the reverbs, through the plug-in, A, B, those sounds, and it was amazing to hear just how indiscernible <laughs> it was between the actual room and the plug-in. Um, so I think that it just stands out because we put a lot of energy and time into making sure it was as close as possible to the real thing.
How many variable or variations are there for someone who were to, to, to use your product that they can adjust between, are, they, are there presets essentially? Yeah, there are, there are tons of presets that we have already in the plugin. We also have um, so many different ways that you can mix and blend the microphones, move the microphones in space, so it's nearly unlimited the types of sounds that you can get out of it. You can process it different ways, and I think that's one of the most amazing things about this plugin, that it's not just a st static dynamic plugin that just does one thing. It, it can do almost anything you need it to do you know, within the realm of that vintage sound and technique. Yeah. Was there anything in particular that stands in your mind, uh, stays in your mind, uh, sticks in your mind about uh, the uh, experience there at the Hitsville building or dealing with the people in particular from that era? Yeah, for sure. Probably the most exciting moment is having John Wint up in that chamber with you, setting it all up, and then having the people downstairs send, send Marvin Gaye's voice through the chamber for the first time in 50 years. Uh, Ain't No Mountain, a soloed vocal track. Isolated. Isolated, and Tammy, and being able to hear that yeah. played back from the chamber. I mean, we were actually in tears hearing in tears. that back yeah. for the first time. For the, fir yeah. for the first time it played back, we were just, my, our minds were blown. Yeah. Was the tape dry when, when, it, when it was fed through into the chamber? We actually had the dry soloed vocals, so it was bone dry, got to put it through the chamber. I mean, yeah. you, t you yeah. explain no, it. No, it was the moment that we played it, I think everybody was shocked because we, we thought it was a recording somehow, and we just kept looking like, is this it? Is this the room? And then we were like, yes, this is it, and it just it blew us away. I think everybody just stopped and paused for a second just to listen and, and appreciate it. Um, and anyone we played it for after that had the same shocking and, and awe moment to hear Marvin back through that same room. It was, it was amazing. So, Were there any other artists, uh, voices, or uh, uh, recordings that you played also to get uh, different sounds? I mean, you can put whatever you want. The, the, the beautiful thing about Hisfield Chambers is that it's such a distinct sounding chamber, but it's also very universal. It doesn't matter what you're using it on. You can use it on any genre, any era. You can get very specific if you want to do something classic soul or funk, but it's such a timeless sound to those chambers that you can use it on virtually anything. It sounds wonderful. When I sat in the engineer's chair, and this was uh, 25, 30 years ago, when I sat in the engineer's chair, which they let you do, uh, you could feel, your foot would feel the indentation in the linoleum. <laughs> do they still have that or did they fill it in? Remember that? Did you sit in the engineer's seat? We did. We got to hang out in the control room a little bit, but it was magical, and especially having John there. John went. It's his first time there since when he left in the late 60s, and he was, he was like a kid. He was like a teenager again being there. He was running everywhere. He was finding things that the staff didn't even know about, old preamps and, and things that were just kind of hidden away that the staff didn't even realize were there. It was incredible to be there with somebody who worked there every day. At one point, Hitsville was running 24 hours a day, actually 23 hours a day. They gave the techs one hour in a 24-hour period to service any of the equipment that might have failed overnight or throughout the day. And just to be there with somebody who lived that experience. Yeah, it's incredible. It's an incredible moment. He, he remembers so much of it, too. And just, it has so many stories. And I think that we just sat and listened and and just in awe of the amount of things he could recall on, on the dime and just like, no, it was about right here. <laughs> this is where we put the mics or this is about where we were standing and this is how we did everything. And it was important to hear that recall because we didn't have video cameras in the room. We had, we had his memory. So we got teleported back in time through him. It was quite amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where can people find the product? Uh, go to uaudio.com. You can download it as a native plugin or via U82 Accelerator or an Apollo interface, and you can run Hitsville. Yep. But yeah, just back to what John's contribution was, I mean, so what to Mo Monty was saying here is, John had a photographic memory of how these setups were done. And I recall him describing exactly what the, de the, the measurements were, the microphone and the drivers. And after he had set it all up and he had left the room, I went with a tape measure to see. And incredibly, it was nearly exactly to the dimensions that he described as to what it should be to get exactly the sound that he created. He created that sound. 
that Motown reverb chamber sound, like I said, it's an imperfect chamber, but he found the exact right equipment, the drivers, the microphones, and the arrangement to make it sound like Motown. Motown, yeah. And to watch him set it up and get that playback experience was just incredible. Yeah. Does Motown license the name Hitsville to you in the product? Yeah, Hitsville USA is owned by the Motown Museum. We got a licensing deal with Motown Museum for Hitsville USA. Did they sell it in the gift shop there? <laughs> they should. I wish. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Tell, hey, Robin, when you get a chance, let's set up some computers so people can demo the chamber and they can A, B it with the real chamber. How about that? That'd be amazing. That would be a good demo. That would be amazing. Okay. Shout out to, to Robin and to the Motown Museum. They totally deserve your support. Thank you. Any way you can support the Motown Museum is much appreciated. They're doing incredible work. They have a recording school now and they're creating a new venue right now. So support the Motown Museum. That's great. Okay.